Committee on Agriculture. Broadband and Rural Development is now in session. Uh, quorum is present. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, our first and only order of business today uh, is the presentation of the governor's budget by our friends from the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Uh, Ms. Wobble, if you would please uh, get where you need to be. Uh, introduce yourself, full name for the record, and then do what you got to do. Good afternoon, members of the committee, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much for having us. For the record, my name is Andrea Vobel. I serve as Deputy Commissioner at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Commissioner Peterson is so sorry he couldn't be here. If you know anything about uh, Commissioner Peterson, he loves to travel the state, and so he is out and about in McIntosh, Minnesota today, uh, and so you are stuck with me for the day. Um, I, I thought, if it's okay, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to do a quick introduction of our amazing uh, leadership team at the department, just so you can get to know and see their faces. Um, we're very uh, proud to um, work alongside these incredible, brilliant minds uh, who do the, the great work for Minnesotans every day. So I will just go down the line here. Uh, starting with Paul Huguenin, he runs our Ag Marketing and Development Division. You all met him uh, last week doing an Agri Overview. Next to him is Ashley Bress, our uh, Assistant Director for Ag Marketing. Matt McDevitt, whom you, you've met as well, he runs our Rural Finance Authority. Lucy Hunt is the Director of our uh, Office of Emergency Preparedness and Response. Josh Stamper runs our Pesticide and Fertilizer Management Division. Michelle Medina is our Director of Government Affairs. Next to her is Tony Cordelette, who runs our Noxious Weed and Industrial Hemp Program. Uh, Assistant Commissioner Peter Chessett over there. He wanted to sit away from everybody today. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Jeff Ludeman, who is the Assistant Director of our Food and Feed Safety Division. Catherine Simon, who is the Director of our uh, Food and Feed Safety Division. Dr. Nicole Neeser runs our Dairy and Meat Inspection Division. Julie Sis is our uh, Finance and Budget Director. Christine Mater runs our grain, uh, grain program out of the Plant Protection Division. And then Mark Abrahamson, who is our director of the Plant Protection Division. I don't think I missed anybody. Oh, and there's Patrice. He also wants to sit away from everybody. If you could stand, he's our uh, other assistant commissioner, Patrice Bailey. Thank you very much for, for letting uh, me take that time. So I am honored and humbled to present the governor's 2023 Ag Budget recommendations to you today. Um, I will, we have a lot to get through, so I will try not to talk as quickly as I usually do, uh, but please feel free to um, ask any questions at any time. Oh. It's not going. There we go. Um, so we just like to do a quick overview of our mission. It really grounds all of the, th the things that we do at the agency and um, was a, a front of mind when we were looking at all the, the recommendations we wanted to put forward to the governor. So our mission, again, is to enhance all Minnesotans' quality of life by equitably ensuring the integrity of our food supply, the health of our environment, and the strength and resilience of our agriculture economy. So we wanted to talk a little bit about our, about our process. So um, we thought it was really important this time we wanted to gather ideas directly from the public. Um, but first, what we always do uh, every year after year is gather ideas from our division directors, uh, many of whom are behind me today and um, our incredible staff who work with all of the programs each and every day. They have a really good insight into what is working and what may not be working, or if there are things they're hearing about in their work that uh, the, the agency should be getting involved in and getting out ahead of. So we always ask them to come up with ideas and, and suggest those to the commissioner's office. Uh, 
again, for the first time, we, we created a legislative portal. So we asked members of the public. Um, we have that open August 1st through September 15th. And we had over 350 submissions, uh, all with a number of fantastic ideas that we sifted through to see um, uh, what kind of themes arose from that and what could inform the process going forward with uh, putting a, a budget together. We also had public meetings on September 7th and 8th of last year and got a lot of really good folks to come and again reiterate a lot of the ideas that they had uh, either put into the portal or, um, or just wanted to, to, to tell us directly. And then of course we had stakeholder meetings with a number of groups uh, around the state to find out what kinds of things they were uh, putting priority on for, for the agriculture budget. So I'll jump right into the governor's budget for, for 2023. The governor's requesting $4 million total in fiscal year 24 and 25 for a healthy soil grant program. This builds on a new soil health financial assistance program that was uh, created last year. Um, it, it began as a pilot program. We actually just released it, uh, our, our $500,000 appropriation, a couple of weeks ago and have already received a number of requests for all of those dollars. Uh, it supports our healthy soil management plan at the state level uh, through voluntary implementation of soil health management practices by awarding funds to access specialized equipment and machinery. When we talked to farmers directly, that was one of the main things that uh, was a barrier for them to, to do some of these BMP or, or soil health practices on their land was the, the lack of access to that expensive and specialized equipment. Our Ag BMP revolving loan increase, the governor is requesting $4 million total in fiscal year 24-25 and $3 million per year ongoing. This seeks to increase the lending capacity for the Ag BMP loan program that we have at the department. Uh, it seeks to address its funding shortfall and support projects and practices that help our state's air and water quality. Mr. McDevitt touched on this a little bit in his RFA presentation, um, but this program is extremely popular with counties around the state. Um, again, it's a revolving loan program, so all of that money comes back and then is reinvested uh, for things like erosion control, water quality projects, and of course to help meet our, our climate action framework goals uh, with our, for our natural and working land. So um, an ongoing increase would uh, be uh, extremely welcomed to the department, but also counties and local units of government. Our Agri Sunset Extension. So again, uh, Mr. Hugan and Ms. Bress gave a lovely presentation last week describing the really uh, robust program we have within the department called Agri. It stands for the Agricultural Growth Research and Innovation Program. Um, again, just as a reminder, it is the fiscal tales of the old ethanol producer payments. There, uh, in statute, there is a sunset date for June 30th, 2025. So we are seeking to extend that sunset. So you will see a $17.5 million per year ongoing ask for that. That is to, again, just continue on the Agri program. Out of Agri, you know, uh, as, as was discussed, there's a number of programs that have come out of that, whether it be urban ag, farm to school, livestock investment, value added, or biofuels, bioincentive program, sustainable ag crop research amongst a number of others. So um, we are, uh, as, as was mentioned, we do have a legislative report that is hopefully coming to you very soon. It's due February 1st, and you'll be able to see the, the broad reach that this program has had uh, over its, its tenure, the last 10 years, uh, and what, what impact it's had in, in your district specifically. Biofuels infrastructure grants, the governor is requesting $1.5 million per year ongoing. This seeks to continue the Agri Biofuels Infrastructure Financial Assistance Program. This is on top of a $3 million uh, uh, appropriation within Agri that's existing right now. These grants help service stations upgrade their equipment, things like fuel dispensers, underground tanks, and associate equipment to be able to sell blends of gasoline containing 15% or more of ethanol. Grants are made to service stations in Minnesota that are independently owned or belong to chains of 10 stations or less. We're really trying to get to those smaller community mom and pop stations around the state who are seeking to offer more consumer choice at, at the pump. Um, we, we recognize that they really want to be able to offer those things to their customers but not, might not have the means to do that. So this seeks to, to help uh, with that shortfall. Agri meat processing grants, 250,000 per year ongoing. This seeks to expand the agri appropriation by increasing funding available specifically for grants to meet poultry, eggs, and milk processors. Um, demand for this has far exceeded the available funding we had in fiscal year 22, so we're hoping to build upon that. And, and as many of you know, with meat processing, that is a goal of the administration, um, even pre-COVID, was to really diversify the, the size, the smaller and mid-sized meat processors around the state, um, and certainly uh, upfront capital is an issue uh, which we, we want to help address. Beginning farmer equipment grants. This, uh, which uh, 
this and, and the next one will be run out of the, our Emerging Farmers Office, which I'll, I'll get into shortly. Um, but this is a new program. We're seeking $200,000 per year ongoing. It's a grant program specifically for new and emerging farmers to increase market access and sales. This did come in through our public portal and was mentioned several times at the public meetings and, and stakeholder meetings. It would be part of the department's value-added grant program out of AGRI. These funds will be used for grants to individuals and operating costs, including engagement and outreach work associated with the development, execution, and administration of the program. The, the idea is that this would be run out of our Emerging Farmers Office. Um, we would also design it and develop it with Emerging Farmers to make sure that it works for them. Um, a big piece of this that we heard was our existing grant programs uh, had high cost requirement, cost match requirements. So this would have uh, a lower cost match requirement to uh, break down some of those barriers and, and provide access for emerging and new farmers. Services to immigrant and BIPOC producers and businesses, the governor's requesting $250,000 per year ongoing for this effort. It seeks to, to support organizations that will provide culturally appropriate services to immigrant and BIPOC ag producers and food system related businesses. This builds upon uh, a CARES Act appropriation that we did a, a couple of years ago to um, a couple of organizations like MEDA, LEDC, and, and HAFA um, to provide, again, technically, technical assistance and culturally appropriate services. Uh, we got a lot of really great feedback, and there's cer certainly more need. Again, this would be run out of the Emerging Farmers Office. The Emerging Farmers Office. We are seeking to expand the EFO, as we call it. Uh, the governor is requesting $700,000 in fiscal year 24-25 and $625,000 per year ongoing. Uh, as of right now, we have one person, uh, she's wonderful, her name is Lillian Otiano, who is our Emerging Farmer Outreach and Engagement Coordinator. Um, she, along with uh, who you met, our Assistant Commissioner Patrice Bailey, work really hard and lead this effort, but there is a lot of need um, that we're hearing each and every day, and we just do not have the capacity to meet the, the needs that we're hearing from Minnesotans every day. So this, this, fund, this ask would fund uh, additional staff needed to provide services for emerging farmers throughout Minnesota, specifically in areas of grants management, as I mentioned, the two previous programs we'd like to run out of the EFO. We, cur we currently do not have grants management capacity in the, in the EFO, and would like to, to provide that. Um, along with that, coordination, communication, and technical support, uh, overall office management, and then tribal consultation. This proposal also includes the elimination of the sunset for the Emerging Farmers Working Group. The Emerging Farmers Working Group was established a couple of years ago and it is set to sunset in 2025. We have found this to be uh, their assistance and um, insight to be immeasurable and uh, extremely helpful in, in uh, helping us review our current programs, but also where other opportunities for the MDA to, to step in and help with some of the barriers emerging farmers around the state are facing. Uh, so again, we would hope to, to eliminate that sunset and continue the Emerging Farmers Working Group well into the future. Minnesota Grown Expansion. The governor is requesting $75,000 per year ongoing to support our Minnesota Grown program. Um, many of you might be aware of it or have seen the little sticker, the brand all around uh, the state when you go visit a UPIC or uh, purchase locally, uh, locally produced goods in, in stores. Um, this program received its first state appropriation 35 years ago in 1987. It was a way to promote products that were grown or raised on Minnesota farms. Uh, the program was originally focused on locally grown produce, and there is still really a heavy specialty crop uh, uh, um, focus uh, uh, within the Minnesota Grown program, um, but we are seeing over the years uh, a significant increase in membership related to locally raised and processed meat and poultry. So we'd like to increase the appropriation. It's not seen an increase since, I believe, 2008. Um, so uh, again, an, an additional 75000 per year to 261000 per year. Um, it will be administered with existing program staffing levels and will allow the agency to invest in paid advertising, social media promotion, public relations, and then also significantly expand the content on our very popular, well-utilized minnesotagrown.com website. Farm, farm safety, health, and wellness. The governor's requesting $250,000 per year ongoing. This seeks to support farm safety outreach and equipment cost share payments to farmers. You might be familiar with the ROPS program, which stands for our Rollover Protective Structures, and our uh, Grain Bin Safety Cost Share Program. Uh, we're seeking to uh, uh, provide additional support for those programs, as well as our stress and mental health, health outreach promotion and support to farmers and others in the agricultural community. It also includes a pass-through grant to the Minnesota FFA Foundation to engage FFA chapters on creating education, training, or outreach related to mental health and, and stress mitigation in their communities. 
The Ag Emergency Account. The governor is requesting $1.5 million in one-time funding to replenish the Ag Emergency Account. The Ag Emergency Account was created in 2016 by the legislature after the 2015 high path avian influenza outbreak. We are so grateful for that and, and uh, so um, thankful for the insight that the legislature had. It's been an incredibly big help uh, and backstop for us as we've uh, sought to, to address and respond to a number of ag emergencies. Um, the, as of right now, we just had um, what we called phase one and phase two of the HPA outbreak last year, both in the spring and then the fall, and we're waiting any day now to see another outbreak this spring. Um, another looming threat is, is African swine fever and is number two in pork production. We know that that will be uh, a significant hit to the agricultural economy, so we want to make sure that whether we're in a session or not, that we have the means to be able to respond quickly and, and adequately. The Good Acre Leaf Program, the governor's requesting $100,000 per year ongoing. This seeks to support the Good Acres Local Emergency Assistance Farmer Fund, or LEAF. It provides underserved farmers with new market channels by paying market rate prices for their produce, all of which then is donated to hunger relief organizations across Minnesota. Uh, the Good Acre created this program uh, during the COVID-19 outbreak, and uh, it was incredibly well utilized. They have great numbers to show the return on investment and the, the, um, the success that this program has proved. So uh, the governor felt it was important to show support and have a, an ongoing state appropriation to continue this program. The governor's requesting eight million, a little over $8 million in fiscal year 24-25 and $9.2 million in 26-27 to maintain service levels at the Department of Agriculture. This ensures that MDA can deliver its current services as cost pressures increase, as everyone is seeing everywhere. Um, our operating budgets cover a number of things like employee compensation growth, IT service rates, vendor contract, and things like uh, laboratory preventative maintenance contracts. If we don't get uh, an operating adjustment, as it's commonly called, um, we don't feel that we can deliver the services that Minnesotans expect uh, and that we would like to provide. MDA IT modernization, the governor's requesting $2.4 million in fiscal year 24, 25, and one time, in addition to a fee authorization in fiscal year 24 and ongoing. This supports efforts to replace our old and outdated IT systems that we have. This builds on an appropriation that was provided by the legislature uh, last year to start and build the foundation really to update again the outdated ITC systems we've had for a number of years related to inspection and compliance. Um, we do have, our, our customers are expecting that a lot more of our services are easier to use and are provided online. They are also becoming quite um, uh, tough to navigate for our, for our staff as well. And, um, we're hoping to create, uh, by moving to these modern technologies, we can improve our self-service options for those who seek our services and to streamline and be more efficient with our staff time and work to provide, again, better customer service, which is our ultimate goal. The Rural Finance Authority, as I mentioned, you, you heard about this last week. The governor's requesting $40 million in bond authority uh, to, to purchase bonds for the purpose of funding RFA bond loans. We have five programs out of the RFA that are, are geo-bonded. Um, one of them is our Beginning Farmer Program, which is by far our most utilized and, and well-known program. We are projected to exhaust our current available funds by October of this year. We are hoping that if we can get this authorization now, we will prevent any shortfall uh, here later in the fall uh, as, we, as we move into to, uh, in increase lending. And as I speak about increased lending, uh, the governor is requesting $150,000 per year ongoing for our RFA capacity increase. This seeks to add additional resources that will reduce bottlenecks in processing and service times. As I mentioned, uh, the, the, the RFA services 13 different types of loans. We also, for that team, added on the Beginning Farmer Tax Credit Administration as well as the new Down Payment Assistance Program. Um, the, uh, the amount of, of loans that we service over the year has tripled. Um, and we just simply do not have the staff capacity to be able to offer the services in the timely manner that we would like and that Minnesotans expect. So we were able to um, find some short-term funding for a, a phenomenal loan officer, um, but we do not have the ongoing capacity to be able to fund that position. So we're asking, the governor's requesting that the, the legislature maintain that, um, that ability to, to keep that person around. Meat processing liaison, the governor's requesting $150,000 dollars per year ongoing. This does uh, include just $75,000 uh, per year in general fund because we will be leveraging $75,000 in federal. 
This seeks to support a meat processing navigator position at the MDA. They would assist new and prospective meat processing plans to navigate the many food safety regulatory requirements that are necessary to become a meat processor. Um, they would also help find available grants and financing that might be uh, existing around not only at the state, but maybe federal sources or, or others, and work through other local processor issues, things like zoning, um, working with local governments, and other infrastructure requirements like, like um, plumbing and, and other things. Um, we, have, uh, we have amazing staff who try and, and, uh, and successfully work a lot with um, folks who are looking to become a meat processor, um, but they also have, there are other full-time jobs that they have to be able to do. We want to free up that time and make it really uh, a, a less burdensome process for those who are looking to get into this. We, we need more meat processors, as I mentioned, um, and we're hopeful that this would help uh, alleviate some of the stress and angst that comes along with looking and, 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 um, and investigating if this is a, a right fit for someone. Food licensing modernization, the governor's requesting $3.8 million in fiscal year 24. This would be a one-time hit to the general fund. It seeks to redirect non-dedicated food handler license and inspection fee revenue from the general fund into a new, fund, new ag fund account. It allows us to create a fund balance that ensures uh, short-term salary issues that we've come across are addressed, but also creates some overall long-term funding stability for that program, which we have, we have asked for for several years and are hopeful that this will um, uh, work itself out this time and, and be able to provide some of that, um, take off some of that pressure of those, that general fund account. The Grain Indemnity Fund, the governor's requesting $5 million one time in fiscal year 24. This seeks a one-time appropriation from the general fund to establish a grain indemnity fund that will pro protect producers who have unpaid grain sales when grain buyers or warehouses become financially insolvent. A number of you have heard uh, over the last several, several years that the state has faced a number of, of insolvencies. Um, we know there are a number of, of, of states around us who have indemnity funds, and as of right now, the, the system we have in place simply does not protect producers. Uh, so this is a, a way that we seek to um, ensure that there is a, an ongoing uh, fund that pr uh, producers can access should they um, be involved in an insolvency. So the one-time investment would be made from the state to establish the fund, and then would be, be replenished through fees associated either with sales of grain or in lieu of current bonding costs. Um, we're also happy to come back and talk about this one a little bit more in depth as it is a, a very um, important, uh, important program that we've put together and thought through quite significantly, and, and there's a lot of questions I'm sure that will, that will come uh, from this proposal. Agri-value added entrepreneurial support. The governor's requesting $250,000 per year ongoing. This seeks to expand the current agri-value added program we have by focusing on key areas of entre entrepreneurial support, including grants for co-packing, cold storage, and commercial kitchens. This was uh, something that came in loud and clear through our public portal and, and working with uh, stakeholders um, that folks who are really seeking to grow their small businesses are lacking in a lot of these supply chain areas. So we're hoping we can help uh, alleviate some of that, that pressure. We would also look to fund additional value-added grants and expand investment in our new, mar new markets cost share program that focuses on food safety and environmental sustainability. You might have heard of things like HACCP plans, which can be somewhat complicated to put together. We would hope that uh, funds like this could help small businesses put those together. Our bioincentive program funding increase, the governor's requesting $5 million in fiscal year 24 and 25 and $10 million in fiscal year 26, 27. It seeks to add funding to play pay claims for incentive payments out of the existing agri-bioincentive program. The purpose of the incentive program uh, is to spur private investment in production of advanced biofuels, renewable chemicals, and biomass thermal energy. It's been, uh, there's, we have quite a few claimants that uh, over the years have, have again made, claim, uh, made, made claims, but we have not had the, the funding uh, available to be able to, um, to pay those claims. So we're hoping that, um, again, claims for these payments greatly exceed the appropriated funds we have of right now, so we're hoping this increase in ASK will reduce that shortfall. Grants for farmers markets hubs. This is another one that came in through the, the public portal. The governor is requesting $700,000 in fiscal year 24-25 to establish and administer a competitive grant program for farmers market hubs in Minnesota. This builds on um, a, an effort that was started under a USDA special crop block grant with um, great organizations like Renewing the Countryside, the Minnesota Institute for Sustainable Ag, and the Minnesota Farmers Market Association. They'll provide funding to start, sustain, and grow aggregation efforts at farmers markets. Um, with this initial program that these, these great organizations put together, they had a lot of interest, and we want to be able to build on, on that great work and um, uh, provide some state funding to, to make that a more robust program. 
Increased second harvest heartland milk allocation. The governor is requesting $250,000 per year ongoing for this effort. It supplements an existing grant to second harvest heartland to purchase milk, protein, and surplus ag items like fruits and vegetables. Um, these funds would be used primarily uh, and specifically for milk purchases. They did have a, a, an appropriation for $600,000 for these milk purposes. Uh, they thought that this would last at least six months, but it ended up lasting four. We know the need is out there and the prices are up. So um, the governor is hoping to help supplement some of those efforts around the state. Expanded international trade support. The governor is requesting $150,000 per year ongoing. This will support a full-time international trade representative based at the MDA for trade missions and international marketing support. As demand for these services have outgrown our current capacity. We have one fantastic uh, international trade representative named, named Jeff Phillips. He does a lot. Uh, as one person um, building out our trade capacity around the globe. Um, but we know that there's a lot more that we can be doing. We also have states around us who have a lot more trade capacity for, for international trade efforts, like Wisconsin and others that have four or five uh, employees dedicated to this effort. Um, so we really want to remain competitive and uh, make sure that we're kind of getting in there first when we're looking at these new and emerging markets around the globe. Uh, so we're hoping an additional staff person will, will be able to help us. Um, additional activities we use within international trade are things like in-market reps. We started one with the um, in Taiwan, and that's been shown to be, uh, be successful, and we know there's more that we can be doing. We just simply don't have the capacity. County fair premium increase. The governor's requesting $200,000 per year ongoing. This proposal increases the aid for eligible county and district ag societies and associations, or county fairs. This will increase the existing base appropriation they have to $674,000. This again are, are premiums that are, are paid out to, um, to county fairs who, who are eligible and apply. And we just wanna, we've heard loud and cleared from them. This did also come in through the portal and through meetings that um, they could use an increase in the premiums they receive to be able to offer the services they do each year. Noxious weed grants. The governor's requesting $400,000 per year ongoing for this effort. It seeks funding to make grants to local units of government and tribal nations for noxious weed detection, control, and management. Um, you might be familiar with things like Palmer Amaranth, Poison Hemlock, Wild Parsnip, and many others. Um, this is a program we've had in the past, but have, we have, uh, funding has not been appropriated uh, for these, this, these um, next biennia. Um, so they've proven to be an effective way for the MDA to provide coordination of efforts while enabling needed on the ground management. We work really closely with our county ag inspectors. We've heard loud and clear that this is extremely helpful for counties and their ag inspectors to be able to do some of these efforts for all of the, the noxious weeds added to the, to the eradication list. <laughs> Climate Implementation Coordinator, the governor is requesting $150,000 per year ongoing. This seeks to establish a new Climate Implementation Coordinator position at MDA. Uh, we have a number of amazing folks who work on climate each and every day, um, but uh, they cross divisions and they often cross teams and units. Um, and so we want to make sure we've got somebody coordinating all of the activities happening not only across all of our MDA divisions, but also uh, with our counterparts at sister agencies, particularly related to the Climate Action Framework goals and, and natural and working lands. We'd also ask this, this person to develop strategic partnerships with outside organizations, and then also coordinate all the federal funding opportunities related to climate, which have grown exponentially through USDA the last couple of years. Pass through grants to ag organizations. The governor is requesting $800,000 in fiscal year 24-25. These are, these are legacy pass, pass throughs. For those of you who've been around, you'll, you'll recognize a lot of these. Um, so these are one time funding for pass through grants. The money comes to us and then we allocate the dollars to them. Um, so places like Center for Rural Policy and Development, the Northern Crops Institute, the Minnesota Turf Seed Council, Minnesota State Poultry Association, the Minnesota State Horticultural Society, um, I'm missing one here, a green seam is another one, and then the Minnesota Livestock Breeders Association. Funding for the pollinator research account. The governor is requesting $100,000 per year ongoing to fund, uh, put dollars into the pollinator research account, which was established a couple of years ago, but no money's been appropriated. This is funding to the University of Minnesota in consultation with the MDA to fund research and outreach activities specifically focused on improving pollinator habitat and pest management practices that reduce the effects of pesticides on pollinators. Topics could include, but are not limited to, IPM, pest economic thresholds, seed treatments, risks to pollinators, and identifying pesticide management programs that are compatible with pollinators. Sorry. 
Fertilizer tonnage fee increase. The governor is requesting, uh, this is not a general fund appropriation, but uh, $750,000 is what we anticipate would be generated with this um, fee increase. The proposal is to seek a 25 per ton cent, 25 cents per ton increase to the fertilizer tonnage fee. Increased revenue will allow MDA to continue to current, current support on inspection and permitting, conduct nitrogen point, evalu point source evaluations and investigations. This was something that came out of the groundwater protection rule that we've been, uh, had no money allocated to do such things, and then sample consumer fertilizer products. The governor is requesting 822,000 in fiscal year 24-25 and 676,000 in fiscal year 26-27 to cover the, the cost that MDA uh, uh, believes may be incurred related to the legalization of adult use cannabis and the standing up of the Office of Cannabis Management. Um, this includes current MDA responsibilities uh, as, as this office is established, including licensing, inspection, enforcement, surveillance, and grants assistance. Um, obviously, we're, we're heavily involved with our industrial hemp program as well as our food inspection activities. We do have a bonding request uh, for our East Grand Forks building we are asking for 457,000, uh, 384,000 in geo bonds and $73,000 in cash. The governor seeks to renovate the potato facility that we have located in East Grand Forks. It's used primarily for potato in Potato related services, including seed potato certification, lab testing for pathogens, our potato cyst nem nematode surveys, our USDA shipping point inspections, our federal crop insurance grading and sampling, uh, amongst a number of other things. It is a state asset um, that we uh, have had for many years. Um, we've done some repairs in the past, but we want to make sure that we're uh, keeping up on those repairs and um, providing, uh, um, again, being smart with the state investment that um, we hope will, will last well into the future. There are several budget neutral changes uh, that you uh, that were included in the governor's budget. Um, the reason they're included here and not in the policy bill is um, they have there's a fiscal component to it, but it does not uh, have any um, impact to the to the general fund. Um, so a couple of things on here. Uh, they're they're pretty. Some of them are pretty technical, but for our pet food registration streamlining. Our current statute requires that pet food distributors register each product and submit a current label annually. It creates an unnecessary burden for our staff, for feed distributors, but also an admin burden for our staff at MDA, uh, because most of them are the same year after year. So uh, we would like to streamline that a bit and have label submission be now within five days upon request of the department. Our plan review fee modernization, we're recommending moving from a level three fee group to a level four. Uh, creating a new smaller facility group for the smaller operations. We also do clarify that the remodel fees in, involved will be calculated based on the remodeled space group and not the full facility. These recommendations were heavily involved, uh, uh, were heavily based on stakeholder input from smaller independent facilities as well as, as larger facilities who all have, have very different needs. Expanded eligibility for farm to school. This was another one that came in uh, through the, the public portal and, and other such meetings. As of right now, the agri uh, farm to school program, uh, we are only allowed to, to give money out to schools. We wanna be able to expand eligibility to early child care centers. We know that they, there is a need, a want, and uh, certainly a, 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 another avenue for farmers um, to provide markets, but then also, again, connect children with local foods. The OSB Production Incentive Amendment, uh, OSB stands for Oriented Strand Board. That is a program that was passed a couple of years ago. There is no funding currently allocated to it, but we know that an incentive program is, uh, can be quite um, administration, uh, administrative heavy, so we just want to make sure that we have uh, the ability to, to um, have admin for that if, if money should be allocated in the future. Expanded option for Agri Sustainable Ag Demonstration Grant. This broadens reimbursable activities, increases options for in-kind match contributions from those applying for those funds. It allows them to, for grantees to use their own labor and their own equipment as an in-kind match instead of reimbursement. Uh, the governor is seeking to modify the bee kill compensation fund. This changes the statute to allow for compensation of eligible beekeepers when a responsible party is determined and will address a potential delay in compensating commercial beekeepers by not tying compensation to the need to determine a responsible party, for example, a pesticide applicator. Updated fee structure for nursery certificates. This is an updated fee structure for nursery stock certificates. Um, it would result in a similar amount of revenue, but it's in better alignment with the amount of nursery stock moved by individual certificate holders. This was also uh, uh, determined in line with our, um, our, our nursery uh, advisory group that we have at the agency. 
um, and could result in a decrease in revenue, but we do not expect it to be enough to affect operation of the overall program. Our RFA down payment assistance grant extension. Uh, the down payment assistance program is, is, is new. We just did our first round um, at the beginning of the year here. I think it was January 4th or January 5th when we opened up for the first $500,000 allocated to that program. Um, we are just asking that we have carry forward authority to spend uh, into the next following fiscal year. Our concern is that uh, sometimes money might be allocated to, to somebody who, who thinks they're gonna be able to use it for a land purchase, a land deal might fall through, and then that, that we don't have a, enough time before the end of the fiscal year to spend that money or encumber that money, and we'd like to be able to keep that to provide to the next person um, if the timing just doesn't work out right. And then clarifying federal fund authority for uh, chronic wasting disease. Um, this is just, a, again, a technical thing. The commissioner already has existing authority under uh, Minnesota statute in, under Chapter 17 to apply for, receive, and disperse federal funding. So the, the, um, the additional add in, uh, the addition of, of federal fund authority for chronic wasting disease in Chapter 35 is just redundant. So we're just um, cleaning that up a little bit. That's just a summary snapshot of all the general fund asks we have. This is really small for anyone to be able to see, but I, I know you've print out, so I wanted you to be able to, to refer back to that whenever you'd like. So for the general fund summary in new dollars that the governor is requesting for, for agriculture, uh, he's asking in 24-25 for 45.5 million, I'm sorry, 45 mil, $45 million. Fiscal year 26 and 27, he's requesting over $71 million. So between the two biennia, $116.5 million in new funds for agriculture. Just a couple of quick additional other ag investments that uh, we, we thought you might be interested in. The Market Bucks program is one that the Department of Agriculture and the administration is extremely supportive of. It's in the humanities budget. We we're happy to see an increase of $100,000 per year for that program. And then the addition of the Ag to School credit in the revenue budget. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to stand for questions. Thank you again for the time. Thank you, Ms. Vobel, for that uh, thorough and efficient presentation, and also for bringing the entire agency with you. Yes. Uh, they're uh, an imposing crew. Yeah, yeah. We made them all uh, so. sit together. So it's a good chance that our questions are going to be a little bit nicer because they're pretty intimidating, and there's a lot of them. Uh, members, do we have uh, questions, comments from Ms. Vobel? Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I do have a few questions. Uh, thank you, Deputy Commissioner Vopel, for the explanation and going through this. Starting on slide number 10, I just have a question if you would give me some idea of what you feel culturally appropriate services, what, what you'd be alluding to there. Yes, I just want Ms. to make Bubble. sure. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator James for the question. Um, uh, yeah, so typically when we're working with um, immigrant populations uh, or, or emerging farmers, um, there might be issues with like translation or, or language barriers that, that might exist. Um, there might be um, certain uh, uh, ways that they might be doing farming that, from a country that they came from. Um, it, it just makes sure that they have someone who, um, who understands specifically what it is that their operation might have been or might have looked like, and again, um, to make sure that they're uh, uh, linguistically able to communicate with those, those producers. Thank Senator you. Senator Dames. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, another question on slide 11. Uh, there you're asking for 700,000 this uh, biennium and, and 625,000 per year ongoing. Could you tell me how many additional staff you have uh, plans to add? Ms. Vavel. Mr. Chair, Senator Dames, yes, we would seek to uh, add an additional four staff to the expansion of the EFO. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Chair. Senator Dames. Uh, Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner, under, the pay, under slide 15, the Good Ace Leaf Program, uh, could you give me some idea of what new market channels you would be looking at trying to develop? Mr. Ms. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Dames, thank you for the question. Um, I, I would um, defer to, to the Good Acres specifically to be able to talk about some of their things. I don't know that they're here in the room, but um, the idea is to connect um, the, the hunger relief organizations around the state are, are in need of culturally appropriate food and, and produce. Um, so this is a way to create, uh, match those market needs. So um, 
the, the folks who are, are looking to purchase such things and then those who can provide it. So it's really the, the, the market access for them into the, the hunger, hunger relief community. Thank you, Ms. Vogel. Uh, Senator Dames, I, I believe the Good Acre Relief Program will be visiting with us in a week or two. Okay, sounds good. I'll, we'll leave that till then. Uh, Mr. Chair? Mr. Dame, Senator Dames. Uh, the bio Senate Program on slide number 24. We're looking at uh, increasing the dollars in order to keep up with the claims request. Can you tell me how many dollars you're receiving on an annual basis of claims versus the funds you have to pay those claims? Ms. Mm -hmm. Bubble? <coughs> yes. <coughs> Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Daines, I'm just checking my notes. Uh, to, I, I had a feeling this question would be asked. Um, so we're anticipating claims of at least $10.4 million in fiscal year 24. Um, on top of the, with the 8.25, uh, that that's includes the governor's request along with the existing appropriation, would be $8,250,000. Uh, so we would not be able to cover the full requests and in, in claims, but it would uh, help reduce the shortfall for fiscal year 24. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Uh, certainly, Senator Ames. So, uh, Deputy Commissioner, does this, uh, you say, estimated, so we've got some businesses sitting out there that we assume are going to come to the full market, and is that assuming what those claims would be then with that? Ms. Vobble? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, Senator James, I will I will confirm, but I, I believe that it does not include those that um, have not al already en enrolled into the program. Ms. Hull, if I uh, may, pardon me, uh, Senator Dames, it, it, am I correct in remembering that this program is actually already operating at a deficit of around nine million dollars? Mr. Chair, yes, that that is my correct. <clears throat> that is my. Uh, that is my understanding. Um, and again, these are just our, our best guess uh, estimations. It, we never quite know exactly how much we're going to get in claims until they actually submit them. So I should just, uh, I should just provide that caveat for you too, Senator Dames. A Senator follow Dames. up, Mr. Chair? Certainly, Senator Dames. So are we still adding new businesses uh, to this program? Is that still an option for new business to qualify for these programs? Ms. Volvo. For this? Incentive. Mr. Chair, Senator Dames, uh, yes, we are, although um, I believe it is set to sunset this program in, in 2025. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. A follow-up, Mr. Chair? Senator Dames. Uh, slide number 28, county fair premium increases. So as I understand, uh, the county fairs receive dollars and that's to help them uh, pay for a portion of the premiums that they pay to the exhibitors. Mm -hmm. And so are we increasing the number of dollars we're going to pay to the fair so they can pay individual premiums at a higher level? Or are we increasing this because we have more exhibitors coming to the fair and therefore we want to keep the same level but make up for the additional exhibitors? Can you tell me which this would be? Ms. Vogel? Mr. Chair, Senator Dames, um, I believe it is just uh, an increased amount to the county fairs that they can then pay to, to whatever premiums they need to, to the exhibitors. I don't know exactly the, it, the number of increases for the exhibitors themselves. I would have to double check with you on that. So follow up, Mr. Chair? Senator Dames. So currently, uh, they, they get a certain percent of the premium, and so what it amount to is that you'd be just increasing the amount paid to a county fair, and then they could either keep the same premium and take less out of their care fair coffers, or they could pay higher premiums. Is that what I'm hearing? So it would be a local decision as to how the money would be used. Ms. Lovell? Mr. Chair, Senator James, that's my understanding, but yeah. I will confirm and get back to you. I appreciate it, and thank you, Commissioner Vobble. Uh, Deputy Commissioner, and I'll turn the floor over. Thank you, Senator Ames. I, I have a, a quick question, Ms. Wobble. Um, beginning farmer equipment grants, uh, it's a fairly modest amount. Uh, does it also include, um, how do we define beginning farmer in that context? Does it include people who might be starting as a farmer, but who perhaps have relatives who also farmed? 
Mr. Chair, thank you for the question. Um, so we have a, um, there's a, a definition for emerging farmer uh, that, that we technically, typically refer to for all of these programs within our emerging farmer working group, the EFO and, and others. So we would, we would stay in line with that definition. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head, perhaps uh, Ms. Painter does, but um, the, <laughs> uh, um, that, that is the, the definition we typically use, um, and, uh, and I, can, I can provide that for you at a later date. Thank you, Ms. Fowler. Members, any other uh, questions or comments? Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair, uh, Deputy Commissioner, uh, following up on Senator Dame's questions with the uh, bio-incentive payments, what, can you refresh me of the amount in the proposal and then uh, I think those, those are capped at a certain point for any, any recipient. Um, and, and how many how many recipients do we have of that bio incentive? Uh, I, I know there's a couple bigger ones, uh, or at least one or two big ones. But if you can give us a little more of the lay of the land of that that picture, Ms. Wobble. Um, Mr. Chair, thank you, Senator Westrom. I know um, I will. Um, we're going to look into that. I know we do have a, a bio incentive legislative report that provides all of these things. So uh, I, if I don't have them right now, I'll make sure to, to send that to you so you have that. Um, but yeah, yeah. Typically, there is a um, there's a couple of larger ones, um, and then um, some smaller claimants that that come in as well. Um, I, there is also a cap on the, the amount that they're able to receive over time. Senator Westrom, Mr. Chair, remind me of the number that's being proposed in the budget you're right now. Yes, Mr. Chair, Senator Westrom, my apologies. Uh, the governor's requesting five million dollars in fiscal year 24-25 and $10 million in 26-27. Um, this is uh, on top of the $4.5 million appropri appropriation that exists within AGRI now. All right, thank you. Senator Kunish. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on your, under your budget neutral changes, uh, the modified B-Kill compensation fund, can you tell us, I know a few years back there was, there seemed to be like a global um, almost annihilation of our, of the, um, the bees and the, and the uh, within the environment that they were living. Could you tell us um, how that uh, trend is uh, trending right now and then what kind of compensation do um, the beekeepers uh, receive when there is like a, a, a mass um, uh, termination of, of the bees. Ms. Vogel. Mr. Chair, Senator Kunish, thank you so much for the question. I am going to ask our uh, division director, Josh Stamper, to just come up and, and answer some of the, those questions. Joshua Stamper, I'm the division director for the Pesticide and Fertilizer Management Division in the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. I cannot speak with great um, certainty about the global status of pollinators um, simply because there's, uh, there's a lot of them and it's hard to keep track of them. Um, with regards to bee kill compensation, um, each year we usually have between zero and three bee kill complaints that are submitted to us. Our intention with this bill is to allow beekeepers that experience bee kills um, to be to be made whole in a more rapid fashion. Currently, the statute requires for commercial beekeepers that um, we have to you know, demonstrate that there was a responsible party, um, and if there was, they would be compensated from that. This streamlines that process so that no one is dangling out in the wind um, trying to get their compensation for the bee kill. Senator Kunish. Oh, thank you for that information. Um, I, I hope that that trend has been reversed because it was a little alarming for a while there. I don't know if they were ever able to really figure out what it was that was that were killing off those hives at such a at such a high uh, rate. Was there ever a, a decision, or was there ever something that they could pin it to, Mr. Sandberg? Mr. Chair, um, Senator Putnam. There are many stressors on insects. Um, I think when we look around at um, kept bees, you know, in Minnesota, they, you know, there's not a lot of area 
that is not cultivated. Um, we do need to provide more habitat um, to pollinators, both, na both native pollinators and um, honeybees that would be kept by beekeepers. Um, there, is a, there are challenges with pesticidal loads, but there are also very significant challenges off of food, forage, access to clean water, but then also parasites um, that are found, especially amongst uh, bees that are kept um, by beekeepers. Many of these, uh, these issues interact um, and can have compounding impacts. Thank Senator you. Kunish. And then just one last comment. I'm really glad to see that um, you that the governor is making additional investments in market bucks. I think I shared with them uh, folks that I started a farmers market in my own community, and those market bucks um, have really made a big difference. And especially with the children, you know, they get their their little coins or whatever and then get off to to purchase their the um, vegetables of their choice and so uh, I really like the way that that supports community it supports families and then also um, those farmers that get to redeem them so thanks so much for uh, continuing to do that work thank you Senator Dornick Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner, for the report and uh, the budget. I had a question, first question on uh, page eight, the biofuel uh, inf infrastructure grants and the need uh, that's out there versus the, the money um, appropriated there asked. How do they request and how many requests have you had uh, to upgrade tanks? So that'd be my first question. Ms. Valma. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Dornick, thank you so much for the, the question. Um, yes, we've had a, a lot of interest in that program. We did have um, uh, $6 million that was appropriated for this purpose, uh, and we did have a um, million dollar uh, uh, also uh, a gift from the corn growers to help supplement that. Um, and there was a, a, a lot of interest on upgrading specifically tanks and, and some of the... Um, the fuel dispensers. Um, I know we do have a report on that as well in terms of specific numbers, and I can get back to you on, on exactly the, the number, but um, we do know that there's there's more of a need uh, than we had funding available. So this is, hopefully this will allow us to, to uh, provide additional infrastructure around the state. Senator Dornick. Follow up, Mr. Chair? Please. Uh, so second question would be, what is the average cost? Do you know what an average cost is for a station? <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'm just going to ask uh, for some help from Mr. Huguenin, our Director of Ag Marketing and Development. Mr. Huguenin, if you would uh, state your full name, please, for the record, sure. and commence your testimony. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, uh, for the record, my name is Paul Huguenin. I'm the Director of the Ag Marketing and Development Division. Um, one step back, I can give you the exact numbers of applications that we had in the last round. So we had 71 applications that requested mm -hmm. approximately $10.5 million. So that gives you a, a kind of some specifics there. Uh, we were able to fund 44 projects. Our grants ranged from $83,000 to $199,000. We could cover up to 65% of their qualifying expenses. Um, and if I was better at math, I could tell you what that meant their total project was. But, but that, get, that gets you pretty close to what the demand and cost was. Senator Dornick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. appreciate that. Last question is uh, for the Deputy Commissioner. Uh, so, is just in the last page the total is once 116 million dollars? Is that new money or is that added? And then I guess the second part of the question would be, what is the total increase of the budget from from the last uh, budget cycle? Thank you, Ms. Wobble. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Dornick, thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so the, the $116 million is um, new dollars, and I should just uh, also note that it does reflect the agri uh, continuation, so that is a, a large portion of that, of that dollar amount. Um, and let me just... Um, um, so per byte, so uh, you'll see it's broken down by biennium in 24-25 and then 26-27. Um, currently, our general fund uh, appropriation as of right now, our base appropriation, is about $139,914,000. So you can see the, uh, the increase that um, over that would be the $45.5 million in just fiscal year 24-25. 
Follow up, Senator Dornick? Great. Senator Kupek. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, Mr. Chair, I think uh, Senator Dornick and I had an ESP thing going on. I had the biofuels question, and he asked everything I was going to ask. So thank you. <laughs> Members, any other questions or telepathic moments? Uh, <laughs> Senator Anderson. You ready to adjourn the meeting? I'll, I'll go with you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Bobble, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I see that we're adding some new uh, program, new uh, positions, coordinators, uh, on the slide on the climate implementation coordinator. I'm just wondering, um, your, the, the money that's being requested is for one uh, position. Uh, is there a long-range goal for more in that particular uh, department? Ms. Hall. Mr. Chair and, and Senator Anderson, thank you for the question. As of right now, we, our, our thought is just the one imp implementation coordinator for climate. Uh, the idea is that that person would help lead the work and coordinate all of the work that existing staff do related to climate. So at this time, there is no plan to grow that as, as, a, as anything else than, than a coordination position. Mr. Chair. Senator Anderson. Uh, talks about coordinating federal funding for those opportunities in that particular office. Uh, what are you anticipating for federal funding? Ms. Vogel. Mr. Chair, Senator Anderson, there's been quite a few opportunities that have come out uh, from USDA, particularly for climate smart commodities, as they've been calling it. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity that exists uh, amongst our agency, but also sister agencies like Bowser and PCA and DNR and others. Um, so we want to make sure we're coordinating on those asks statewide. Um, we also know that there is a FAR bill coming up, um, and we anticipate that there will be some additional opportunities that come out of the farm bill as well. So we want to make sure that um, we're not missing any opportunities that maybe other states would be capitalizing on, knowing that um, there's a, a lot of opportunity here in Minnesota to do some great things related to natural working lands and, and climate. Mr. Chair. Senator Anderson. In regards to the position here, we, we have an energy co committee that meets on a regular basis throughout the week. Are, is there any coordination between this particular position and the energy uh, offices? Ms. Hall? Senator Putnam, uh, or I'm sorry, Chair Putnam, uh, uh, Senator Anderson. Um, yeah, so we work quite closely um, in our, our climate climate activities enterprise-wide. Um, we do work with the Department of Commerce, who, who runs the energy offices for the state. Um, we also do work with, again, as I mentioned, PCA, uh, DNR. We also work with MnDOT on decarbonization of transportation activities, things like biofuels and sustainable aviation fuel and, and other things. Um, so certainly, yes, we're, we're talking with our, our energy counterparts at the Department of Commerce. Senator uh, Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, another slide. Uh, even though the federal government hasn't legalized adult use of cannabis that I know of, we are seeking money here for uh, that proposal of legalizing adult use cannabis. I'm wondering, um, for the money that you're asking for, how many FTEs will that be covering? Ms. Vopel. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Anderson, um, I do know, and just, just to note on that, um, that, that money is is traveling in another bill. The reason we wanted to include it is because it would be, uh, we wanted to show that MDA's role in, in the, the um, standing up of the office and, and its continuation well into the future um, should, should that, that pass. Um, and we are currently working on a fiscal note for exactly what, what the, the impact would be for the agency. This is what we anticipate being. I'm just going to check with uh, Assistant Commissioner Peter Chesset if he could come up. He's running all things cannabis for us at the agency. If you could please state your full name for the record and commence your testimony. Thank you, Chair and members. My name is Peter Chesset. I'm one of the Assistant Commissioners at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Uh, so, Senator, the, the uh, Deputy Commissioner is right. So, the funding that was presented today is included in uh, the governor's recommendation for the establishment of an Office of Cannabis Management. It represents uh, some of the costs to uh, the department we do. That proposal envisions that Office of Cannabis Management uh, entering into interagency agreements with 
agencies such as our, uh, our own to s help set up and uh, get that office running. Uh, I, in terms of FTEs, I don't know what that number would be for the Office of Cannabis Management. Again, the fiscal note is being drafted uh, as we speak, but we can certainly get that information to you. Well, Mr. Chair. Senator Anderson. Uh, in, in the small summary that here it talks about licensing, talks about inspection, talks about enforcement, uh, surveillance, and grants. Sounds like you're going to have to have more than just one. Mr. Jessen. Uh, I'm sorry, Senator, more than just one. FTE. Oh, yes, I imagine it'll probably be more than just one. You imagine? Uh, I can say it's going to be more than one. But you're not sure how much you're planning uh, on. Uh, sorry. Mr. Chair. Senator Anderson. Yeah, again, all of those activities that are mentioned in that slide would be activities under the Office of Cannabis Management. So we would be uh, consulting with them to help set up their own licensing, inspection, uh, enforcement programs. And Mr. Chair. Senator Anderson. Um, would you be working with other agencies within state government uh, as far as judiciary, law enforcement, things like that, for that purpose? Mr. Chesson. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator, yes, it would be an inter a pretty much an enterprise-wide uh, endeavor to, to stand up that office. Thank you. Members, any further questions or discussion? Well, thank you very much, uh, our friends at MDA. Um, a couple quick procedural notes for members. Uh, this Wednesday, we'll be, uh, I will be presenting the RFA bill. Uh, Senate file 548 and then we will have a similar presentation one a presentation similar to the one which we used today from our friends at deed to talk about the broadband uh, budget uh, Members I also wanted to put on your radar uh, We will be talking about cannabis uh, a week from today. It's a big bill uh, So I wanted to mention it today so we can start reading it now if we could um, I would also like to encourage us members to focus on the elements of that bill that are specific to agriculture I would like to keep our conversation focused on those particular dimensions of it on the day that we got to speak about it, because there's lots to talk about. Um, so uh, there being no further business before, uh, Senator Dames. So would you be sending us an outline of purview of what Uh, Senator Dames, I will do that, um, but uh, I would also encourage a greater understanding of the bill as a whole, but I will send you areas to focus on, uh, as best of my knowledge. Uh, so are you going to limit our discussion to the areas that A focuses on, or the entire bill? Senator Dames, I'm going to encourage us to stay focused on those areas. If there are areas that are uh, collateral or in the same area, of course we can still talk about them. Uh, but given the, the scope and the size of the bill, I just think it's a good idea to kind of keep our uh, attention in that area. But like I said, I have no intention of policing the conversation in that way. I just would encourage us to keep uh, a, a slight focus on those issues that are most germane to, to our concerns because there's lots for us to talk about. Senator Anderson. Uh, what was the number on that bill? As on the cannabis bill? Senate, Senate file 73. Senate file 73. Thank you. You're welcome, Senator Anderson. Any further questions or concerns, members? There being no further business for the committee, the committee is adjourned.